Welcome back to Hack Code. In this video, we're tackling an essential problem for coding interviews, meeting rooms to from late code. This problem is great for learning intervals, sorting, and heap uses. We'll explore three approaches, brute force, to ponder technique, and heap solution. Let's break down the problem step by step and understand how the solutions work. Before we dive in, I just want to give a heads up that this is a lead code premium question and I don't have access to lead code premium. So that's why I'll be solving the same question using the lead code platform. Don't worry, the question is exactly the same. So sit back, relax and let's dive in. So what is the problem statement? Given an array of meeting time intervals consisting of start and end times. So here basically the input is list of list in which each internal list is like start and end time and always start time less than the end time, okay? Find the minimum number of conference rooms required. So interesting, right? So we just need to find the meetings which are happening parallelly and accommodate the separate room for each of them. And the meetings which are happening sequentially, we can reuse the existing rooms. That's the concept, guys. That's the main idea here, okay? So what is the example here? In example one, we have intervals given us 0, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20. So if we represent this graphically, what do we get? 0, 30 is a long running meeting and 5, 10 and 15, 20 are the meetings which are happening sequentially. So here we can reuse the same room for these meetings and we need another room for this meeting. So that's why we require two rooms to accommodate all the meetings we have. So this is two is the minimum count. So if I have two rooms, we can accommodate all the meetings. If you have more also, we can accommodate. So minimum count is two here. So in example two, we have intervals as only one element, two comma seven. That means that we just need one room as a minimum. So if you have more rooms also, we can accommodate, right? So that's all. So this is just the basic question. So we just test about problem solving skills about thinking in a logical fashion. So nothing complicated, okay? So here, luckily they haven't given any constraints. So we'll assume it, uh, the interval length in the enclosure range of one to 10 power four. But in actual coding interviews, you'll be given a constraints, like intervals length is in the enclosure range of one to 10 power six. In that case, we can't solve that in n square complex t. The reason being, we can only perform 10 power eight operations per second. So here, if length is 10 power six, if we do n square time complex t, it is like what 10 power 12. We can accommodate it in 10 power 8. That's why we need O of n log n solution. So if its maximum length is 10 power 4, then 10 power 4 whole square is what 10 power 8. So 10 power 8 operations can be done per second. So if this is in the enclosure range of 0 to 10 power 4, we can perform an n square operations. Okay. So this is the wire plate code given, wherein we have minimum meeting rooms method, which takes the intervals, which is a list of interval. So here interval is defined as a data structure, which is like start and end time, and then the method returns the integer. So this integer is what? The minimum number of meeting rooms required to accommodate all the meetings, okay? So let's dive in. Before we get started, I want to remind you about our exclusive blind and fair post. This carefully curated collection covers essential coding interview problems to help you master the most common patterns and excel in your interviews. Whether you're prepping for fang level interviews or just sharpening your problem solving skills, these problems will ensure you're ready for anything. Even if the exact questions aren't asked, they cover all the important patterns. So be sure to check out our playlist and stay ahead of the completion. So first let's understand the overlapping condition guys. So for two intervals start to an end one and start to end two, the condition for them to overlap is interval one ends after interval two starts and interval two ends after interval one starts. So basically this should not be completely separated intervals. There should be a hook between these two intervals. Okay. So in this example, we have one, four, three, five, and the two conditions are satisfied here. N1 greater than start two, here N1 is four, start two is three, so four greater than three, that's why we have the satisfied, and also similarly, we have N2 greater than start one. So here, uh, we can see that these two are overlapping. Why do we want double checks here? So can't we ensure with just like N1 greater than start two? No, we want both checks. So let's look into example five, 10, one, four. So here, we have N1 greater than start two. That means that uh, we have this condition satisfied. But it doesn't guarantee that these two are overlapping. Here, this is ending before this is starting. So for that cases, we have to check if n2 greater than start one, right? So that's why to fully capture all possibilities, we need to check two conditions. n1 greater than start two, this ensures interval one extends beyond the start of the interval two. And also n2 greater than start one. This ensures that interval two extends beyond the start of interval one, okay? So let's look into another example. So here we have two, four, five, eight. And we have this condition e2 greater than s1 satisfied. This is the second condition we have. So if this is satisfied, it doesn't guarantee that these are overlapping, right? So here this is satisfied, but these two are completely different intervals, right? So we have to check for both cases. Okay, that's why we have two conditions for ensuring that we have an overlapping case. So let's look into approach one, which is brute force. So what is the intuition here? We compare each meeting interval with every other interval to see if they overlap. 
For each interval, we count how many other intervals are overlapping at the same time and calculate the maximum number of overlaps. So this maximum number of overlaps represents the minimum number of rooms required. Okay. So basically the more they overlap, the more rooms we have to accommodate. So if we get the number of rooms for the maximum number of overlaps, then it means that we got the minimum number of rooms. So those are the minimum number of rooms required. So even if there are more rooms also, we can accommodate all these meetings. So that is the minimum case we have. Okay. So here we need to calculate the maximum number of overlaps. Okay. So let's look into algorithm. Check if interval array is empty. So if interval array is empty, how many rooms you require? Zero rooms, right? So that's why we return zero. Okay. So in step two, for each interval, assume at least one room is needed. So if one interval is there, we require one room, right? One interval represents one meeting. That means that we require at least one meeting room to accommodate this one meeting. Okay. And in step three, we compare each interval with every other interval to check for overlaps. So this is the basic check requires, right? So we need to compare each interval with every other interval to get the number of overlaps. Okay. In step four, we count how many intervals overlap with current one. So we should avoid the double counting. Okay. And also we need to update the maximum room count. Okay. So let's look into code guys. So firstly, as we discussed, if interval is empty or null, we just return zero because we don't require any rooms to accommodate the meetings because we have no meetings. That's why. And, and if interval is of length one, we require a one meeting room. That's why we return one. Next, we just start with our actual implementation. Here we define max rooms is equal to zero and current rooms is equal to zero. So this is for holding a global variable. This is for the current iteration variables. Okay. Step one here is to loop through each interval. So we had to loop to the range of zero to n minus one. So that is taken care of this range function. Okay. Because uh, this is exclusive range. Right? That's why it generates the index within the range of zero to n minus one only. In step two, we assume, right, we require at least one room for a current interval. Okay. So that's what we're doing current room plus one. Initially it was zero and we insert into plus one before even comparing. Okay. And then in step three, we comparing each interval with every other interval to check for overlaps. That's why we use another for loop here. Okay. So for each interval, we have to check for every other interval, right? That's why we require this another for loop. So here we are ensuring we are not comparing with the same interval. So basically we should not compare the interval with itself. It doesn't make sense. That's why we are checking if i is not equal to j. Okay. So in step four, we just check if the intervals overlap and ensure we don't double count over the overlaps. Okay. So for overlap condition, we just discussed, right? So n1 should be greater than start two and n2 should be greater than start one. This is our overlap condition. That's what we have. Okay. This is what we have start one, right? So here ij are one, two. Okay. So this is start one less than our n2. So j is what two. So here we're checking the end. So this is this condition. And then this is like start two less than n1. So here this is start two and this is the n1. So we cover these two conditions and what conditions we have additionally here intervals of i start greater than intervals of j start. So basically why is this required? So this is required to avoid the double counting guys. So let's take this case 0, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20. So here when i is equals to 0, we get like 0, 30 and when j is equals to 1, we get 5, 10. So here in this case, we count for one overlap. That means like one room required and also we count for this room in another scenario as well when i is equals to one and j is equals to zero then also we count the same interval right so basically when i is equals to one it means that it is at five ten when j is equals to zero it means that we are checking for zero thirty case so in this case we are double counting the number of rooms required for this combination so to ensure we avoid this duplicates what we are checking we just checking if start one is greater than start two in that case only we are counting the number of rooms required for this particular set of meeting. Okay. So that's what this step is guys. That's all is just to avoid the duplicates. Okay. So we do the iterations, right? Like for each interval, we check for other interval in that case to avoid the duplicate counting. We just add this one more condition. It's nothing fancy. We just checking if start one is greater than start two. Okay. So if these three conditions are satisfied, we just increment our current room counts. Okay. So once this for loop is completed, it means that for a given interval, we check all other intervals and we updated our current rooms required. Okay. And the next step is what we need to update the maximum rooms required. Okay. So here maximum rooms equal to max of max rooms comma current rooms. Okay. So basically this is taking the max of these two and then we store in max rooms. After this, we are resetting the current rooms to zero to ensure that uh, we have it set zero for the next iteration. Okay. So don't get confused by looking max here. So this max 
is what like minimum number of rooms required here so minimum number of rooms is what how many maximum overlaps we have so this max rooms kind of count here for the maximum overlap so whatever the max we are getting here that would be accommodated to the minimum rooms because like if we have this many rooms then we can accommodate this meetings and greater meetings as well so that's why we are using this condition as max here okay so at the end after checking all these iterations we just set in the max rooms which holds our minimum number of rooms required okay so guys this is for the case where we don't have the data structure defined for interval so it could be a plain list of lists so in that case what we have to replace we need to replace the dot sort with zeroth index and dot end with first index that's all like this code changes that's all so here we replacing in intervals of i dot sort with intervals of i zero similarly we replacing j dot end with j one so basically this is the start index this is the end side so we are replacing start with index of zero and end with index of one so this remains same okay so what are complexities so let's look into our complexities the time complex is o of n square because we have n intervals here and then we're comparing it with n minus one intervals that means that n square minus n so here this is an negligible factor we have n square remains so that's why we have n square time complexity okay the space complex is o of one because we're using only variables to track the number of rooms required and we're not using any data structure that goes with the size of the input that's why it's o of one okay so i got the code ready here let me try running this so this is accept the solution for the given test case. Let me try submitting this. So this accept solution for all the test cases. So that means that our O of N square solution is acceptable. So here, whatever the assumption we made is correct. So the array length is in the enclosure range of 0 to 10 power 4. Okay. So let's look into another approach. So before we dive in, I just want to give you a basics here. So let's say we have this 0, 5, 1, 6, 5, 7 intervals. And we have this as a sorted on the start time. Then if you draw this in the timeline, we'll get as a 0, 5 at the first and 1, 6 in the next. So here for the two intervals to overlap, we can definitely get it using a one condition. That is if the end one is greater than the start two, that means that we don't need to check about the start times because these are already sorted. And then if we check if end one greater than start two, this is enough, right? So here this ensures that these two are overlapping intervals. That's the basic guys. So let's explore our two pointer technique using sorting. So this has time complexity of n log n. This is the optimal solution than before. So what is intuition? The two pointer technique involves sorting the start and end times of meeting separately. We can use two pointers to go through the start and end times increasing the room count when a meeting starts before the last one ends and decreasing it when a meeting ends before a new meeting starts so basically this is just like dynamically adjusting the number of rooms we have okay this gets a dynamic count and before that what we do we just split this into separate list we have a start and end time set we collect into separate list hold together and iterate it this is a simple approach but an intuitive one okay so what is the algorithm here? We extract the start and end times from all the intervals and sort separately. Step two, instance two pointers for tracking the start and end times and a variable to track the current number of rooms required. So basically we require the variables, right? For iterating over the start and end times. That's the two pointers here, which is start pointer and the end pointer. So we just need two pointers to iterate over this two lists, okay? In step three, iterate to the start times and for each start time, Check if room is available by comparing it with the earliest end time. So this is the basic check we require. We just sorted it and then we just need to check this condition. If start 2 plus than n1 or we can say if n1 is greater than the start 2. So basically this checks if this is a previous interval which is started before this interval. That's what we have condition. Okay. In step 4, if no room is available, increase the room count. If a room becomes free, reduce the count. So we have this variable, right? Current number of rooms. We'll just increase and decrease based on the overlaps we have. That's the basic thing we have. Let's dive into the code. So firstly, what we're doing, the same case as previous approach, we're just checking if intervals is null or empty. In that case, we return zero to represent that when we don't have any meetings, we should not require any rooms. So that's why it is zero. And next step, we just discussed an algorithm, right? We're just segregating the start and end times into a separate list, okay? So here sort times is what the sorted version of all the sort times we have so for that what we are using is list comprehension approach in python so basically here we are extracting the start part of all the intervals we have and then this is made into a list and this list is passed into our sorted function this returns the sorted version of all the sort times and we're doing the same for the end times okay and next we are initializing our sort and end pointer to zero so basically this is to iterate our sort and end times list okay and next we are defining the variables num rooms and max rooms this is the same concept we had as previous approach 
where we use the max rooms and current rooms so basically here num rooms represents the current rooms required okay so we discussed it we increment and decrement the rooms based on the availability so if uh, meetings were not happening parallelly we decrement the room count and then if meetings are happening parallelly we increment the room count okay so this max rooms hold the global reference in step 2 we just iterating the start times so this is the basic check so this is a while loop right so we checking if the start pointer is less than the length of intervals so basically we just checking if the start pointer is in the valid index range okay and in step 3 we check if the meeting can start before the earliest ending meeting ends so here we just doing the same check we have we just checking if the start to less than the end one because this is a sorted list right so we can't say if the particular meeting is the first meeting or particular meeting is the second meeting because this is split between the start and end times so what we are checking we just checking if start times of start pointer less than the end times of end pointer so basically it's the same check in a different fashion okay but the concept is same guys so if the meetings are sorted if the end one is greater than start two that means that there is overlap so here we just doing the same thing using this format we checking start times of start pointer less than the end times of end pointer so this means that there is a overlap right for that overlap cases we just need to increment the number of rooms we have so we just doing number of rooms plus is equals to 1 and also we should increment our start pointer in order to not consider the start time again and in else case the else case is what we don't have overlap on this meetings are happening in a sequential order that is like one after another in that case we have to decrement the number of rooms and also increment the end pointer because end pointer is what holds a reference to our end meeting right so if one meeting is considered already and that is ended we should not consider it again in that case we have to increment our end pointer okay so after this we just updating our max rooms this is same as a previous approach here we had read max room is equals to max of max rooms and current rooms the same thing we are doing max room is equals to max of max rooms and num rooms okay and then at the end we return the max rooms so for the cases where we don't have intervals as a list of intervals so that means that the intervals is just a plain list that is 2d list list of list of integers so for that case what changes we just change that i dot start with i of 0 so basically this is for getting the start point okay and this is for getting the end point of the given interval okay so we just accessing using the indexes since this is a 2d list that's the only difference we have between these two approaches so what are complexities here the time complex is of n log n because we sort the start times and end times so basically we doing the sorting twice here e sorting takes n log n time and then this two factors negligible that's why it's of n log n here and then here we iterating to the n times right so basically we not exceeding the length of the list so that's why it is n n plus n log n is what n log n only right because this is negligible in front of n log n so the time complexity remains n log n the space complex is of n because we store the start and end times in separate arrays so that's actually 2n but 2 is negligible factor so it's n okay So I got the code ready here. Let me try running this. So this accept the solution for this test case. Let me try submitting this. So guys, this is accept solution for all the cases we have. So next is heap based approach. You know, right? Heap is a complete binary tree in which we have two heaps, min heap and max heap. So what is the property of min heap? Given node is always smaller than the child nodes, and the root node is the smallest among all other nodes. This property is also known as min heap property. So this is the min heap property. So basically, this root node, as we see here, this is smaller than all the child nodes it has. Okay, for the max heap, it will be the largest element. So now, how exactly we are utilizing this property for a solution? So let's look at the induction for same. Okay, so using a heap, we can efficiently track the end time of the meetings and allocate the rooms dynamically. So basically, we are keeping track of the meetings end time in the heap. Okay. this heap i was just to quickly find the earliest ending meeting so we can check if a new meeting can use the same room or a new room is required so you know that right here the root node holds the lowest element that means that uh, the earliest ending meetings end time would be stored here so based on the earliest ending meetings end time we can decide if we require a new room or we can reuse the same room that's the idea guys simple right so what is algorithm sort the intervals by the start times next initialize a min heap to keep track of the end times of ongoing meetings so this is something we discussed next is for each meeting check if the earliest ending meeting has finished before the current one starts so how we can check this we can just check if the current meeting start time is greater than this end time of the root node okay so basically this gives us the idea if the meeting is started after the certain meeting ended or else like if the meeting is starting parallelly okay In step four, we just checking if the earliest meeting has finished before we remove the meeting from the heap. Okay, so basically we are popping that end time from the heap. In other case, in the case where uh, we don't have the earliest meeting ended, 
So it both are ongoing meetings. In this case, we are the current meetings end time to the heap represent a new room being used. So what it means? So basically, the length of the elements in the heap can determine the number of rooms required. Right? So we are adding and removing the elements based on uh, if the current meeting has started after the previous meeting ended or if current meeting has started while the other meeting is running. Right. So this is the idea, guys. So we are just utilizing the heap properties to get the minimum element. Okay. That minimum element is what minimum end time. Minimum element represents the earliest meetings end time. Okay. So let's look into the code. So before we dive into the code, I'm just giving you a heads up that we are not implementing the heap from scratch. Rather, we're using a heap queue model in Python. In this heap queue model, we're just utilizing only two methods, heap push and heap pop. So what heap pop does it? It pops the minimum element on the heap. And then what heap push does is like it just pushes the element into the heap. Okay. So here uh, it converts the list data structure into the heap basically. So if the parent index is i, then it ensures that it always less than the child index. So for a list to represent in a heap, the left child index would be a 2i plus 1 and the right child would be a 2i plus 2 index. Okay. So this is the basics. Okay. Now let's look into the code. So firstly, we just have the same thing here. If not intervals, we return 0. We clear, you know, why we do this by this time. Okay. And next here, we are sorting the intervals based on the start time. This is the lambda function we have. So if you are not aware of the lambda syntax, it's just like input and output. So basically input is what it takes and output is a written statement. So here the key is start. So basically we are sorting based on the start time. That's why we use this lambda function. Okay. And next we are initializing the min heap. So here uh, we just utilizing the heap queue. So that's why we initialize the heap as a list. Okay. And in step three, we are the first meetings end time to the heap. Okay. So since we already sorted our intervals here, we can just add the first meeting end time to the heap. Okay. So for that, we are utilizing the heap push method from heap queue. Okay. So the syntax is basically, uh, we just pass the list followed by the element we want to insert. So what we have to insert first meeting end time. Since this is a sorted, like it would give us a first meeting end time. And step four, we iterate over the remaining intervals. So for that, uh, we have to iterate in the range of one to length of intervals. So this would give the indexes in the range of one to n minus one, where n is the length of the intervals. Okay. In this loop, we are just checking if the current meeting starts after the earliest meeting ends. So what it means? So we can reuse the existing room, right? We don't want a fresh room. So for that case, we can use a heap pop. So what does heap pop does? So basically it removes the smallest element. So here smallest element is what in our case, earliest ending meetings time, right? So we just remove that and then after that we just push the current meeting end time. So that means that the heap size is maintained to be one only. So we are not incrementing the heap size. Okay. The heap size would be incremented only if current meeting is getting started while the other meeting is running. So in that case only we are incrementing the heap size. So you got the idea, right? So we push the element into the heap only if two or three meetings are running in parallel. So that case only we are incrementing the heap. So that's how the heap length would give us the total number of rooms required. Okay. You got the idea, right? So here we're just accessing the start time and then we're checking if it is greater than or equal to the heap of zero. Heap of zero gives what the earliest ending meetings end time. Okay. So we're just checking if this is greater than or equal to that end time. So in that case, we can use free up the room and then use the same room. So that's what we are doing. We're just using the heap pop method and then we pass in the heap. Okay. Heap is our list here. So after that, we're just pushing the current meeting end time to the heap using the heap push method we have. This takes the list and the element we want to push. Element we want to push is what? End time. Intervals of i dot end. Okay. So this is how we push the element into the heap using the heap push. So after completing all these iterations, we just return the length of the heap. So the size of the heap is the number of rooms we require, right? We just discussed how this translates to the number of rooms required. Okay. So let's look at the case where we have intervals as list of list of integers. Here we had list of intervals, right? What if we had as a list of list of integers? In that case, we can access the start element using the index zero as we discussed before. So only that case changes here. So here uh, in the lambda function, we pass x of x of zero. So basically x of zero is what a short time. And also here uh, while he push also, we are taking the end time, right? So here end time is what? Intervals of zero dot end, right? So that is now replaced by intervals of zero one. So one is what accessing the end time. Okay. And in heap push as well, we are pushing the end using intervals of i of one. Okay. So at the end, we just treating the length of the heap. Everything remains same. So what are complexities? Time complex is of n log n because we sort the intervals and manage the heap for n times. You know, right? How many number of intervals we have that many n times we have. So basically this n times length is equal to the length of the interval. Okay. So length of the interval, let's take it as n. So here, uh, this step takes n log n and 
this heap pop heap push takes log n so basically each takes log n so we are doing that for n times n into log n plus log n that means that 2n log n so total is 2n log n plus n log n so total is 3n log n right and 3 is negligible so it is n log n the space complexity is of n as we store the n times of meetings in a heap so basically we are pushing the n times of the meetings into a heap right so for the worst case scenario there would be n overlaps so since for n overlaps we have to take care of the n different meeting rooms so that is o of n here okay i got the code ready here let me try running this this is accepted for this test case let me try summoning this so this is accepted for all the cases we have so congrats guys you just learned the three different approaches first is brute force and next is this two pointed technique with sorting and next is our min heap based approach so these three are very good problem solving techniques hope you remember this and able to apply this for other problems as well and this is a wrap on solving the meeting rooms two problem using three different approaches if you found this video useful drop a comment below and share your thoughts don't forget to like the video spread the word to your fellow coders and hit that subscribe button for more in depth coding tutorials Also do follow on Instagram for latest updates. See you in the next.